Hello and welcome to A Clash of Kings, a mod for Mountain Blade Warband. And I've been wanting to play this mod for a long time. However, I can never get it to work until now. And it's a good time for me to do this because they've just released the latest version, which is 1.2, which adds a lot of content, so now's a better time than any. And I want to point out that there's going to be a lot of spoilers in this game, so if you haven't read the books or watched the TV series, I suggest you do so. And uh, let's get to it, shall we? Now, this bit of information just tells you that King Robert has died while out hunting, and that Eddard Stark decided to upset the king, or the throne, and he was captured, basically, so... And while he's being held, his son... Robert Stark, or Rob Stark, wanted to save him, so he rides out and ends up capturing the Kingslayer, who is Jamie Lannister. And that's when me as a character decides that I can go out there, make a name for myself, since there's going to be a lot of opportunity with a war about to break out. However, I am playing this differently. Originally, it was always my intention to play and join the Starks and just help them because we all like the Starks and we all hate the Lannisters. However, a lot of people are going to be doing that and I wanted to try something different. So, I am going to be a Ironborn and I am going to be a, I want to say, servant. I am going to be a follower of the Drowned God. And he is basically a god that's like how you worship him is by pillaging, raiding, stealing, <laughs> killing. So I think that's going to fit quite perfectly with the type of character I'm going to make. The only thing I'm going to say is that I'm not going to actually join the Ironborn faction. They own the Iron Islands and it's my intention to take that over one day. And I think for this game, I'm going to pay the iron price, which is you only take what you... You only take stuff from the people you kill. So... I'm not going to buy anything from the marketplace. If I can help it. You never know. I may be forced to, you know, if I need some emergency food, but we'll see. So that's my goal. So I'm going to start this off. And my father was a thief. And I was a sort of street a street urchin, which was a, basically a thief. And later I became a... Now I've got the option here. I could go thief. I want to say outlaw, but no. I think I'm going to go thief as well. That's going to give me some nice stats here. So... Or do I want something else? I could go sellsword. Sellsword's always nice. Pit fight is interesting, but I think a thief or an outlaw would be best. Let's have a look at what does it say. No, I think I'll be an outlaw, because you only take from what you kill, so just stealing stuff randomly doesn't really work but uh, the reason for an adventure is for lust of money and power so I need to sort my character here now I'm probably going to need some more points in strength I will need more points in leadership eventually but right now it's going to be important that I can hold my own because I'm going to be using you know, a, a small amount of troops so this is going to be the important part now I'm not sure if I want to use f throwing or archery archery is always useful especially if we're going to be like attacking places but I'm not sure yet so I'm going to leave it empty I will put a point into athletics because running is going to be quite important. I'll put a point into shield. I've already got a point into foraging. In fact, I'll probably max out foraging just because my agility is probably going to be maxed out this playthrough. So that will help collecting food as I'm on the go. 
Now I'll probably want to put a couple of points, well one point into prisoner management because we're going to need to make money somehow. Now I'm going to go ahead and just put a few points into pole arms because you never know when I'm going to need this. Now I'm going to call my character Brunner. Now I'm unsure if I should call him Bl Brunner Blackheart or Brunner the Burns. I think Brunner the Burns will work. I was thinking Brunner the Bastard, but then that might sound like he's just a bastard child, which is, isn't the case that I'm going for. But, uh... So let's go ahead and do my character. And the reason I call him Brunner the Burns is because of this. Yes, they've got a houndish type of skin here. Face all burns, and I figure that's going to work nicely. I'm going to go with the good old uh, faithful beard here because the others will cover up his uh, burn markings, which I don't really want, so or I don't want that to happen. Now let's get to it, shall we? The intro for A Clash of Kings basically says that you're travelling with a merchant, and then you go to a town, you get drunk, and you go outside, and then all of a sudden you hear the rasp of a blade sliding from its scabbard, as per normal in Mountain Blade. So let's go ahead and do this. Now the only problem is, is that I've got pretty crap gear. I've got some rocks and a rusty sword, and this rusty sword is perhaps one of the worst weapons I've ever seen in Mountain Blade. It's abysmal, and I'm going to have a hard time starting off, I just want to point that out. Now I want to point out as well, I can use manual blocking. Not that I want to throw that out there as an excuse for it or anything, but it is a lot harder, so... But it does make combat more satisfying. When you hear those chinks, it means you're doing well. Okay, so this weapon does more damage when you thrust. Side to side hits, uh, overhead, barely do any damage, so... That's why it's hard early on. But, um, we'll see. So anyway, oops. This is the merchant. I'm going to ignore all this. He basically says he's going to travel to uh, to uh, different lands to make more money since war's about to break out here. Now, if you choose the first option, which is sort of noblish, you will get uh, some money. But since I'm a bit of a bastard, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, what do I care? Not be rewarded anything. Shoot myself in the foot, but whatever. So okay. Let's do this, shall we? We've started off here at the Weeping Tower. And I'll give you a quick overview of the map. But uh, first I want to hit the tavern. The taverns are quite cool because... They actually feel like the taverns, they've got people in here doing stuff. So... I'm just wondering who I want to hire first of all. I was hoping a companion would be here, but unfortunately not. And these guys are quite expensive. But, uh... Okay, so there's nothing there. Now, let's have a quick look at the map. So, here we go. We've got... King's Landing, the Western Lands. So, everything in red is the Lannisters, basically. Then you've got River Run. We go up here, you've got the North, which, for some reason, points to the south on the compass. But then you've got Winterfell there, and the wall is here, although you can't visit it, which is a shame. I think that's something they're working on, but... Yeah, there's a lot of uh, points of interest on this in this game. Now, let me quickly show you the factions as well. So you've got Bravo, uh, Bravo's Dawn, Dragonstone... Then you got the, you know, there's a lot more, but you got the North, the Iron Islands, where I'm basically hailing from, although I'm not joining them officially. Then you have the North, the Reach, the Stormlands, which is where Renly is from, and you also have which one is it that's okay? Dragonstone is where Stannis comes from, so. Yeah, those are the big important players. There's a lot of characters and stuff as well, which is quite cool. Now, I want to show you the Iron Islands. Now, the reason I decided to do this type of playthrough is after I saw the Iron Islands. Let me find them. They're here somewhere. They are here somewhere. 
Here they are. I just thought that looked really cool. It's like, you know, just pirates on their own piratey islands. Sadly, there's no boats in this game. The way you travel between islands is by going to these towers and you can basically just travel across. But you can't go around on the boat like you can in Floris. Which would have been awesome if you could, I'd have become a pirate for sure, but... Anyway. Let's get back to it, we're at Weeping Tower. Now... As I said... I've got this rusty sword, it does 13 damage if I swing it. And it does 17 if I thrust it, so thrusting's more useful. Now I've got a bit of a dilemma. I can't go anywhere at the moment because... The only place you really find looters early on is this little forest. And if you leave, I've left and come back and then they were no longer there. And then you, if you fight outlaws, which are basically outlaws, but they are strong. They have a leader, an outlaw leader, that has full sort of chainmail with a tabard over it, armor, decent weapons. And he's a bit tough to kill, especially if you're welding the crap that I am. So... If I go over here, there should be a bunch of looters. Now, as I said, I'm paying the iron price for everything. I'm going to just take what I want. And kill who I have to. That's how I'm going to play this. So that's the only way I'm going to be able to upgrade my gear. But just to point out that if you actually want to buy your gear. The basic sword costs a few thousand. The only things you can really afford to buy are like... Uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, farming tools. So okay, I should be able to take out five looters, no problem. There is one problem. There is a problem. Is that they use spears, and this game includes the bonus spear damage to horses. So if you accidentally get hit by one of them, you'll be knocked off and then you'll be swarmed. And this sword is not going to save you, so... I'm going to be careful while doing this. I'll just figure I'll throw that out there so it's a bit helpful for you guys. But if I can, See, there's the one go with the spear, but if I can at least take a couple of them out, if I do get demounted, I can at least kill the rest. Get out of there before my horse dies. Oh, oh, oh. Now what I need to do is go grab that shield from that corpse if I can. I think I might do that. Where's his body? Here it is. So the one-handed axe is going to be better than what I'm using. I didn't mean to get off there. I can't see it. I better go. I wonder if I can throw the rocks while I'm riding thinking about it. I will laugh if it actually knocks someone out. <laughs> okay, it, it worked. If I could just get that axe, this would become easier. I really want a, uh, a shield, but an axe will work. But yeah, this is going to be a slow, slow paced fight. Don't want to balk it up. I have restarted this series a couple of times, I haven't released it yet, I've been trying to find like a, a nice way to play through it, originally I was going to join the Starks as I said, but I changed my mind, and uh, I'm kind of glad that I did because this should be quite interesting, I've always wanted to do a sort of outlaw playthrough on Mountain Blade, but uh, Westeros, you know, if you've seen the, if you've read the books or watched the uh, series, you know there's a lot of outlaws in that game, and a lot of nasty people, and I think this is the perfect setting to do this. Anyway, managed to take him down. Let's see what I get. I actually get a prisoner, which is nice because I can sell him. Okay, I get an axe which does 27 swing damage. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Now there's a couple of shields here, now let's have a look. What's the difference between the two? This one's clearly better for some reason, but it's not listed there. 
got a nice new cap. Now here's the thing, do I take, do I keep the sword, do I take an additional two shields and use them, you know, after mine breaks inevitably? Ooh, new gloves as well, okay. In fact, I've got some new gear here. It's actually better than what I'm wearing. See, I think it'll be in my best interest to take a couple of extra shields. Okay, so don't be fooled by how much they're worth. Oh, they're all worth the same price. I guess they're just listed differently. So if I take these extra shields, I feel that I'll just be able to survive longer in a fight. The swing damage on this is 27, so it no longer matters if I thrust with this sword. Although the weapon reach is abysmal. That's something to keep in mind. So I'll probably be better fighting on the ground, but with three shields to burn through. It probably won't be too bad, in fact. I'll tell you what. We'll keep one axe just in case we want to test, test the waters a bit. Anyway, I'm going to take all this junk. And we probably will sell this stuff to marketplaces because, you know, we need to make money somehow. But we're not paying for anything. That's an important distinction. So... Maybe we'll go to the Weeping Tower, sell this prisoner. I could always have him join me, to be honest, but... Probably not worth it. I kind of just want to get exclusively mercenaries, unless I can recruit outlaws, but... Wasn't there a slaver here originally? I must be imagining things. So I could hire one of these guys. Elite Sellsword Spearman. That's probably worth it. Probably. Alright, I'm going to get rid of this rusty sword because it offends me. We'll just sell everything we've collected so far. I think it's going to be important that I get companions as well. So I made a bit more money. Let's see if I can recruit the rest of these uh, spearmen. Oh, he's gone. Well, I can't afford these guys, but look at that. That is really cool looking armor. Okay. Let's move on. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to find any more small groups of looters. It's going to be these large groups, but as I said, I do a lot more damage now. Like 20? Wasn't it like lower than that a second ago? I think there's I think there's two groups there, so I've got to be careful. If I fight both of them, I'm a dead man. I may have no choice other than to recruit from some of these towns initially. I suppose that's not a bad thing to do and then eventually just, you know, dump them out. But just to get started, I need some sort of backup. Only one of them wants to join me, disappointing. Low well, one's better than none. But screw it. Let's have a look around. Let's see if we can find some looters to fight. I do a lot more damage now, so I should be able to just pick them off. Like one good swing as I charge provided they don't take out my horse if they do take out my horse I have a shield so I should be able to back pedal and do the old uh, hack and block so but if I have some troops that would help me quite a bit in fact before we continue on let's have a look at the mod options so everything is default I haven't messed with any of this but the one thing I would like to turn on is to show the minimap so, oh, and reassign dehorsed cavalry to infantry. I always find that is quite useful. And done. See, no prisoner wanted to join me. His loss. His loss. Okay, so where are the looters? I saw them earlier. 
There's Sir Davis Seaworth, if anyone knows who he is. Oh, there we go, perfect. Seven looters. See, I could just go on the ground for this fight, but I think I'll charge. Let my guys here move forward. If they die, they die. So what? But this has a really bad reach, so I have to be right up against someone to take them out. It'll be worth testing. Watch out for that spirit as I dive right into it. Not a problem though. This is so much easier once you've got a shield. I wonder. I was wondering if this shield had. if we would like a shield bash. Shield bashing is in the game. I think it depends on the type of weapon, the type of shield you're using. This clearly isn't one. One of my troops died, not a problem though. We should have access to more gear. That actually does more damage than what I'm... Oh no, it doesn't. But we'll take it anyway. See, now I've got a bow. I wonder if I, if I should start using the bows. Would a bow be a good thing to have? I figure I'll need to use it eventually. I'd rather use throwing weapons, they're just more fun, but when you've got to fight the enemy, you know. Anyway, I've leveled, so let's have a look. I can go ahead and put that in the strength, boost up my health a little bit more. I could go ahead and invest that point into power draw, I'm not sure though. See, using a bow would take up two spots, whereas using a throwing weapon doesn't. I'll put the point into shield for the moment. Because that's going to be going with me the whole way. Okay, so I want to make my way back. Make some room, sell what I've got. I think I will just try and stick to mercenaries I can hire from taverns because what I'm probably going to do is a lot of uh, raiding of villages and I'll probably get a lot of you know resources that are worth quite a bit when I sell. So keeping that in mind I should have plenty of money since I'm not buying stuff. I should have plenty of money to uh, hire people. But as I was what I was talking about earlier as you can see cheapest sword is 3200 the rest of your weapons are just you know like tools sickles clubs forks you know but the weeping tower is a good place to start off okay so first companion Okay, so this is, uh, so this guy, if you played Floris, he's the uh, mercenary trainer called Sigmund, but in this he basically deals in Unsullied. So I think I should use this, I just hire Unsullied, that's going to be an awesome way to do this. Each recruit costs 400. They're expensive though, dear lord. I 
Anyway, we've hired them. Oh, they're actually pretty strong, I suppose, but I originally thought I could talk to them, and, uh... I've got 300 left. Well, I always thought that with Unsolid you could, uh... Tell them what you wanted to wear, but apparently, well, the mercenaries, apparently not, but that's not a problem to be honest. Oh, wait, I can talk to them. So, this is their equipment, I can give them anything, but oh, wow. Can I? <laughs> I could take their gear. Hell, I should just sell this. That might be a good way of making money. If you just, like, hired someone, took their gear, and then sold it, you could probably just make a lot of money that way, but... No. So I kind of want to take that spear. But to be honest, no, I've got to pay the iron price. So... These guys are pretty strong. And they're very tanky. So that's going to be... Yeah, hiring on solid is might be the way for me to go. I just roam around with like this army of solid killers. Then I can actually go take any lord in the field would be quite useful. I want to put these on solid to the test. We need some looters, and I'm just gonna let them fight. Although if they die, they're very expensive to replace, so I do have to be careful. All right, twenty looters here. Time for the Unsullied to show me what they can do. Now, of course, they can still get mobbed, so I'm going to do my best to... Uh... ...thin out the herd, as it were. thing I want to do is be demounted here. Right in the middle of them. Solid, they do what you say. Okay, everyone charge, I need help. So if I raid towns, they're not going to say a damn thing. If I give one set of gear to one of them, do all of them wear it? Is that how it works? That would be cool. Anyway, I've got a lot of axes here which are worth quite a bit. I'll be able to use them, sell them. Also got me a nice spear. I feel like I should invest in the trade option, but honestly I don't think it really matters. But I do need to increase my inventory capacity, especially if I'm going to be raiding. 
I think what I'll do is I'll continue to kill these looters, sell what I collect, and then I can go ahead and keep recruiting the unsolid while I'm here. So I have a little bit of an army. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for watching, and I hope you're going to enjoy this series. It should be fun. Something different, kind of. Anyway, until next time, thank you for watching.